always very, very happy to be in Bulgaria. And uh, I've got a little quiz for you once my slides come up. So I always try and learn a bit of the language when I go to a new place and uh, ask my friends about some words like good morning and how are you. And so the question is, what is going to be the output? All right, so if I say good morning, what's that, dobro utro? Dobro utro, right, good morning. So um, what will be the output when I do sp.toString and then I um, call s1.length? Will it be nine? Who says it's going to be nine? You've got to count really quickly here to get this right. Who says 10? Who says 20? All right. Who says something else? Anybody with something else? No, okay. And then I want to say, how are you? Obichamte. All right. W pardon? Uh, well, what does it mean? Oh, I love you. Okay. That explains a few comments yesterday by some of the ladies I was speaking to. All right. <laughs> mm, thanks, for, thanks for helping me there. <laughs> Okay, next time I'll be more careful. I won't believe everybody that tells me stuff. So um, now I append that to string, buffer, string build as well. So what's the output now? Is it going to be 19? Who says it's going to be 19? Anybody? All right. Um, anybody say it's going to be 20? All right, a few names, a few hands, good. 40? All right. Okay, something else? Okay, what do you say when you say something else? 30, right? Okay, very good. Anybody say 9 or 10? No? Any other ideas? Let's run it. Okay, let's see how well we did. And, ah, out of memory error, right? So the first one was 10, the second one out of memory error. All right, let's start. So, I actually wrote this uh, talk together with uh, Dmitry Vazelenko, and unfortunately he is not able to come. Um, I've got another quiz for you. Um, this is four different ways of, of adding strings together. Now, this is only strings. I'm adding strings to strings. The first one is with plus. The second one is with string build or append. And with the third one, I'm first figuring out how big the string build has to be. And after that, I'm going to um, generate my string. And the fourth one, I'm using the, the, I'm using the regular expression, string.format. And there, I'm putting in you know, percentage s, da, 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 da. So who thinks the first one is the fastest? All right, good. The second one fastest? No one? Okay, one or two. The third one who's fastest? Okay, some interesting hands going up. The fourth one fastest? Anybody? All right, I've got a couple of hands there. Um, and who thinks that the first one is the slowest? Okay. The second one the slowest? The third one the slowest? The fourth one the slowest? Ah, lots of hands going up for that one. All right, that's, um, this is almost like a European election. Yeah. Okay. So we've got um, Java 1.0, when the dinosaurs roamed the earth. Um, some of you were still in, uh, uh, in pre-primary school when that was released. Um, and in those days, we had four fields, a char array, an int for the offset and int, int for the count. Now, if you look at that, you wonder, why do they have offset and count inside the string. Well, if you, make, if you made a substring in those days, it would share the same underlying char array, but simply have different offset and lengths inside the char array. So you could, have, you could make very cheap substrings. You could, you could split up a string to lots of strings simply by doing that, by saying substring. Um, hash code used samples of characters if the string was longer than 16. Some other funny things, equals didn't check whether the objects are actually the same, identical. In turn, used the static hash table, which was a memory leak, of course. Um, and then string buffer uh, was a modifiable 
thread safe version that uh, it's a bit like a vector of type char, right? Vector is thread safe, thread, thread safe type of array list, and this is like a, a vector of type car, char. What's also interesting is with string buffer, when you call to string, it actually shared the underlying char array between the, the string buffer and the string. Now, of course, string buffer can be changed, but if you, if you change the string buffer, then it would make a copy of the char array inside string buffer and continue working from that. The benefit was that it was very cheap to convert a string buffer to a string because you would share the same underlying char array. All right, now this is what the hash code looked like in Java 1.0. And it's quite interesting. If the length is less than 16 over here, then um, it would count all of the characters and multiply them by some number, 37. And if it was bigger than 16, it would only look at eight of the characters. So if you had 1,000 characters, it would put like 0, I don't know, 125, or 62, whatever, and then find all the only eight of those characters. So you can imagine you had a lot of cases where strings which were very similar had the same hash code in Java 1.0. Oh, um, I'm, as, as you said, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not the catch-up guy. I just uh, write the Java Special Newsletter. I, I do training for companies who love their employees. So if your employer loves you, call me. But if, oh, no, the surprise is a bit, actually a bit earlier. So I've got a surprise that only works before 10.55, tinyurl.com slash jprime19. And if you go there, you're going to get something which is really, I think you'll like it a lot. Um, but I'm only going to show you this once. So get this now, because by 11 o'clock, it's going to be gone. Once you've got it, you've got it for life. But you need to get it, like, now. So tinyurl.com slash drayprime19. Also, for those who are remote, you're welcome to take this as well. All right. Um, let's move on to something more interesting than myself. Java 1.1, the fields stayed the same. Hash code was still sampling. In turn, they moved into native code, which wasn't necessarily faster because now you had a native method call. And they had some funny edge cases, like, for example, to uppercase sometimes ended up with a larger string than the previous string, with the German SZ became two big S's. Java wanted two, they kept the fields the same, but they changed the hash code. And if you can imagine, this is a long time ago. It's like, nine, I don't know, 90. Uh, 98 or so, 99. Even in those days, there was already legacy code with Java 1.1. And people had already written hundreds of thousands, millions of lines of Java code, even in those days. And changing the hash code upset a lot of people because they said, we didn't know you were going to change it. You know, they had all these tests. They had maybe some serialized classes and hash codes serialized, and it upset everybody. So since then, they've been very careful. They've never changed the hash code since Java 1.2. They've just kept it the same. We also have the comparable interface, and we'll talk about that a bit more later, why that's important. Java 1.0 and 1.1 had constant time lookup. So it was constant time calculation. The worst case scenario was 16 characters. Now, <laughs> Even though it's 16 characters seems like faster than, seems slower than eight characters, it isn't actually slower than eight characters. It's actually faster than eight characters because when you read 16 characters, you can read them all at the same time. Whereas if you read eight characters dispersed throughout your, your string, you actually have to do eight lookups throughout the string. But it doesn't matter. We can see that there's, it's still constant time. Java wanted to, it became linear time. Now, this, of course, could cause all sorts of issues. And uh, there was a book called The Java 2 Performance and Idiot Guide. What are you laughing at? Oh, sorry. Um, idiom Guide. Idiom Guide. It's not Idiot Guide. It, it is a good book, really good book for, the, for its time. Right? Um, and the problem with performance books is that as soon as the ink is dry, they're out of date. Because new versions of Java come out and everything changes. And um, uh, so one of the big arguments they said is you should never use string as a key because it's got linear time for lookup for the hash code in a hash map. You should always wrap string with another object and then cache the hash code. Now, that's what they said. And Java 3, <laughs> they did that. Uh, Sun did that. So they added the hash code into the string. 
Now you might ask yourself, won't that increase the size of every single string by four bytes? So even if you never hash with the hash code, isn't this a complete waste to add it and to make every string be eight char uh, four characters more? And the answer is no, that was actually for free. All right? How does that make sense? Well, Java at the time was mostly being used as 32-bit VMs. That was the, at the time the most common one. And a 32-bit VM uses eight bytes for the object header, and then four bytes for the pointer for the value, four for the int offset, and four for the count. And uh, uh, memory is always assigned in multiples of eight, so there was actually four bytes, which was just spare, which they um, was just wasted. So adding the hash did not increase the size of the objects by anything. It was just wasted space, which was used for caching the hash code. And you can see now in the hash code, if the hash is zero, then uh, you, know, you, can, you, you can just work it out over and over again. Um, uh, you can work it out um, if it's zero, and if once, once, it's, once you've worked it out, you've got the hash code. But this also means the hash is not, the string isn't really immutable, because um, if, if, when you make a new string, it's got hash of zero. When you now call hash from two different threads, you will have a data race, but it's what we call a benign data race, because in the end, the answer is always the same. So it doesn't matter who writes first, or if they have a right to each other's results, it doesn't matter because in the end the answer is the same. So it's completely thread safe, but it's, um, uh, it gets worked up multiple times and written multiple times. Now, um, I went before I came here to the Bulgarian phone directory, and I got some names out there, right? No, I'm joking. Uh, what do these strings have in common? The length is the same, exactly. So it's length six, pardon? Very good. All the hash code is zero. For all these strings, the hash code is zero. All right? And um, I, I generated this with brute force in parallel. So, you know, I did that. But um, the problem with a hash code of zero is that when you combine these strings with other strings of hash code zero, the hash code is still zero. So you can generate an infinite number of sequences of strings with hash code of zero of whatever length you want. And the longer you make the string, the more costly it gets to actually calculate this hash code. And it's always going to be zero, so you're working it out over and over and over again, and it's always equal to zero. Why is it so bad? Well, because the, the cost becomes linear. So if I've got a loop that's counting, that's trying to do lookups, it's going to become, easy to become a quadratic performance. And uh, so people could attack servers by sending a whole bunch of strings with hash code of zero to the server, and then the performance would degrade over and over again. Now, I've got a little example of that here with um, IntelliJ. Let's get rid of this example. And um, go to the other one. Ah, let's do it on command prompt. Right, so Java EU Playground Hasher String DOS. So this is, wait, let's just get this and write Java 6. So Java 6 I'll use. This is now, I don't have Java 4 or Java 3 on my machine, but Java 6 has got, ah, sorry, I need to actually do this a bit differently. I'll do it over here. Okay, and Java EU Playground Hasher String DOS. There. Now this is, I'm, I'm doubling the size. Ah, sorry, again, this is not ah, the wrong version of Java. Excuse me for my little snuff who's here. And just run it again. So this is now Java 6, and you can see that as I double the size of the map, Java gets slower and slower and slower. It basically, um, the lookup becomes linear, the lookup on, on the map. So I'm doubling it, and now, um, it goes from one second to two seconds. So it's a linear lookup. So if I double the, the, the size of the map, it takes twice as long to do the lookup. And so this, of course, is, is a problem. You know, having uh, performance degrading like that on your server. You could, make a, um, you could put a million elements into one bucket, and every time somebody does a lookup, 
it has to go dip, 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 to try and find it. So that, of course, is not really how we want to work. All right. So let's move on to Java. So that's what we showed. Java 4. Now, Java 4 had the same field as 1.3. They also introduced an interface called char sequence. So if you want to have a different way of doing strings, you can actually work with char sequence rather than string. Now, this is quite, con quite convenient. And we've got regular expressions, so matches, split, etc. The regular expression used the, uh, is it the interpreter design pattern? I think it's that one. And that generates lots of objects. So we have lots of objects being made with this. So in the past, when I said, Hello plus args naught, for example, in Java 4 and 1, 0 up to 1, 4. And this would compile to new string buffer dot append hello dot append args naught dot to string. So this code would actually be injected into my, into my bytecode, and that's how they would add it together. And a new string buffer would create an array of 16 characters, and then I would append hello, which is six characters plus the name. That's another few characters, and then convert it to string. Now, in Java 5, the fields remain the same as 1.3, but they mark them final, except, of course, hash couldn't be final, because <laughs> we want to change it later on. They also introduced code points, which are 32-bit um, characters. It's two, uh, two characters combined. And then string builder was added as an unsynchronized string buffer. Now, it was actually completely pointless adding string builder. It was a, it was a mistake. They could have, because in Java 6, they fixed the general problem that they were trying to solve with string builder, which means they didn't actually need to do that to add string, string builder. They could have used it as string buffer. Now, string builder is an unsynchronized version of string buffer. Now, of course, most of the time, when you're using string buffer, you're using it inside a method. So you're constructing the string buffer, adding some elements, and then converting it to a string, and then you're, you're throwing it away again. So because you're throwing it away every time, you could, you don't need the synchronization. Well, Java is clever enough to do that without your help, to do that by itself, to automatically throw away the synchronization when you don't need it. But it can only do that since Java 6. So they added the string build, a string build actually complicated everything quite a bit, and it wasn't necessary. They could have simply solved the problem in a general way, and that's what, that's what they did in Java 6. But now we've got two. We've got string build and string buffer, two different forms of string, of, multi, of move, uh, changeable strings. So string build is like an array list. String buffer is like a vector of type chart. The problem is, if you had handcrafted string buffer code in those days in Java 5, string buffer was slower than string build in Java 5, and so you had to re- compile, well, if you handcraft a string buffer code, it will typically be slower than using plus in Java 5. So you have to change all that optimization code and throw it away and redo it with string build or just with plus. In Java 6, they, they kept most, most of the things the same, but they added compressed strings. And these were funny because your string could either be a byte array when it was a seven uh, bit ASCII character string, otherwise it was a char array. So either a byte array or a char array. And whilst you're running, it would, it would change. Well, you know, you make a new string, it would make it either a, a byte array or a char array. Um, so when you're doing, for example, profiling, in, inside your profile you'll see either byte array or char array. You have to know which one to look for. It's a bit confusing. They also added optimized string concat, which did a whole bunch of clever things. And in some cases, they could even share the char array between string builders and string buffer and string. So you know the trick that I told you about in Java 1.0, where string buffer shared the underlying char array with string? They could do that same thing in, um, with optimized string concat as well, automatically without. Um, and the funny thing is, if you look at the Java code, it doesn't share it. But if you look at the memory allocation, it does share it. Now, the quiz I showed you at the beginning, uh, not the very first one, the second one, was, of course, a trick, because all of them are exactly the same speed. All right. But they're only the same speed because we are appending strings together. 
If we were appending something besides strings, for example, ints and doubles and floats, they would not be the same speed. And we'll get into that in a moment as to what is the best speed now. So you can see that the, the speed, um, and also, also you can see that the amount number of bytes allocated, so the top is the number of nanoseconds per operation, and the bottom is the number of bytes allocated. You can see that the allocation has, um, is constant between the, the first three mechanisms, the pen basic, the pen string build, the pen string build size. Now what I don't have on here is the string format. The string format at the moment is much more expensive at the moment. So those who put up their hand for the very last quiz, you actually got it right for the current version of Java. But that is changing soon. So in the future, we're going to have string format being as fast as plus. All right, so that's coming in a new version, Java, I don't know, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, in a few months from now, basically. All right. Java 7, they changed things again. They, um, they got rid of the offset and the length, and they simply have a pointer to the, ch to the char array. And what that means is that you now um, don't, if you make a substring, it has, to, it has to make a new char array for the substring. So before, when you had multiple, multiple substrings, you'd have to, uh, you, could, you could use the same underlying char array and have lots and lots of different, different strings mapping to that substring. But, uh, but now, every time you make a new char array, which, which, which can cause problems. So my hack, I've got at the bottom there, newsletter 230, uh, at the bottom of the screen, and, and with that one, it actually, um, I use the char sequence as a, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a interface, and then I subclass it with a subable string, which has a very fast way of, of cutting up the char array into, well, to share the underlying char array and do very fast um, substrings. So if you need the functionality, you have to write it yourself. Um, something else they did was they added a field called hash32. So hash32. Now hash32, um, the idea was to prevent these denial of service attacks on servers. If you use string as a key, then what they would do is instead of working out the hash code every single time that you call it um, and having the, all these clashes, they'd actually have a sort of randomized hash code where you can't predict what the number's going to be. So if you run our string uh, denial of service attack from, from before with Java 7, you'll notice that it's going to be much, much faster. All right, at least that's what I thought when I, when I used to talk about this. And um, this is Java 7, and you can see that it's not actually any faster. And the funny thing is I, I, I knew about hash 32, and for many years I would tell people, well, this is now really fast, but I never tried it out until last year when I was doing, preparing for this talk, and I realized that actually, you have to turn it on explicitly, right? So you have to go to use this minus D, J, D, K, alt, uh, map, alt hashing threshold equals some number. Let me just kill this. And um, then it starts at the same speed as before, but once it gets past a certain size, boom. Right? It gets very fast because now you don't have everything inside one bucket. They're distributed across the whole hash map. So it becomes much faster. All right, so it's super fast. And again, it's one of those things that they, in optimization, they added, which didn't really seem to be necessary. Right? There's another thing which they did in Java 7 is they added a new constructor that took a char array and a Boolean. So this constructor was package access, which meant we couldn't call it ourselves directly. So you can call it from your code, unless you used like deep reflection and set, set accessible true, uh, and in which case you can do anything anyway, but you, couldn't, you can call it directly. Um, and what, what you could do, if, if you could call it, you could construct a string that, that pointed to an existing char array. Normally, when you construct a string with a char array, it would make a copy of the char array. But here, I can point it to an existing char array, and then it wouldn't make a copy of the char array. So you can imagine how one could use that, right? If, you want to, if you've got all these char arrays, you want to generate strings very quickly from them, 
you could do it this way. Now, there is actually a way that you can do it with a class called Shared Secrets. So Shared Secrets um, uh, dot get Java Lang access dot new string unsafe would create a string with an existing trial array. This has been a ra this has been Java 7 and 8. Java 9, they, it doesn't, uh, doesn't work anymore, uh, fortunately. Well, because we, use, we, don't, we don't use char array, we use byte array in Java 9. Um, and they've moved it out of harm's way. So, but in the past, you could do it this way. All right, have I skipped it? No, that's right. So Java 8, they got rid of the, th uh, the hash 32 because what they decided to do is to solve the problem of the clashes in a general fashion. As long as your key is comparable, it will generate a tree in case you have lots of bucket collisions. So if lots of elements go to the same bucket, then they just build a binary tree there for you, a red-black tree. They also had static methods for joining several strings and deduplication, which I'll talk about some more in the next uh, slide. So let's try this little um, program with Java 8. And uh, now if I run it with, I don't need any of the special flags anymore. You can see that in Java 8, and it, this is the same in Java 9 and 10 and 11. As we double the size, it gets a little bit slower, but not double, uh, not twice as slow. In fact, it's going to take longer to actually generate the hash code, than, the hash map, than it's going to be for navigating it. So your worst case scenario is now order log in rather than order in. So that's, that's a great addition. As I said, it takes, it's, starts, it's starting to take a long time to actually build this whole map up. But once it's built up, it's pretty fast. All right. Okay. Now, deduplication. We've always had a, a problem with, with char array taking a lot of memory. And there are different solutions for, for solving that. The one solution is to use in turn. Now, I mentioned in turn uh, at, the, at the beginning, um, Java, Java 1 0 already. The idea with in turn is that if I've got, let's say I read a string from a database, and I think that I've, I've probably seen this string before lots of times. In theory, I could say dot in turn and that would look whether that string is inside the string constant pool. If it is, it will return that. Otherwise, it will put it there and then return that. So if you have lots of the same string over and over again, you could save memory by using in turn all the time. Uh, I will talk about why that's not a good idea. Now, the other approach is to deduplicate the underlying char array. So if, if I read strings from the database or from the network, and it's very often the same string, then, um, then with deduplication, it can automatically pick this up and share the underlying char array between the multiple strings. So this is a, this is a very useful little uh, construct, and it can save quite a bit of memory. You have to turn it on explicitly because it also does cost some CPU. Nothing's for free in this world. So you have to, you have to pay for that. And um, here's an example. I, I make a char array, and then I make two strings with that char array. And when you make a string with an existing char array, it copies the char array. So it's going to have two copies of the char array. I then read the actual char array, and I see that, that it's, it has a different identity hash code. This is the identity hash code here, 76ED, blah, 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 and 2C7 something else. And what I now do is I call system GC explicitly. Now, you don't have to do that. It, it, it will automatically, after some GC events, will, will actually do this. But I'm doing it explicitly. I'm also sleeping for a little bit, because this whole process of deduplication takes a bit of time. And I want to make sure that I'm going to show you the deduplicated strings. So after I've, after I've slept for a bit and I've done a GC, I then print out the, the two hash codes. And you see that the entity hash codes are now the same. So both strings now share the underlying char array. So there's some memory saving. There can be a lot depending on your system. In some cases, you can get like 33% savings in your memory. Now, there are different ways that you can, you can save memory with strings. Um, and if you say a new string, hello world, in Java 8, for example, most of the time we're using 64-bit compressed oops. Let me just explain that a little bit. 64-bit, OK, we all know what that is. 
64-bit normally would have eight bytes per pointer. But when, if you start your virtual machine and you, and you give it less than 32 gigabytes of memory, then it's going to, by default, have compressed OOPs, which means it's going to be four bytes per character, uh, not per character, per pointer. So if you, if you allocate your virtual machine with 50 gigabytes, it's going to be eight bytes per character. And if you allocate it with 30 gigabytes, or less than 32, it's going to make it with, um, with, with, with four bytes per character. And most of the time, when we, nowadays, when we're using Java, it's going to be 64-bit. It's going to be compressed OOPs, so four bytes per pointer. And um, if it's compressed OOPs, 64-bit, you're going to have 12 bytes for, the, for the, the object header, right? That's for the string, the header, plus four bytes for the, the value pointer, plus four bytes for the hash, is rounded up to the, to the nearest eight-byte multiple, so it's rounded up to 24 bytes. And if you've got a, the char array itself, it's also an object, so you've got 12 bytes for the object header, plus the 12 characters, two bytes per character, this 24 bytes plus 4 bytes comes to exactly 40 bytes. So a total of 64 bytes. So a new string hello world gets to 64 bytes. Um, technically, it actually also shares the underlying char array with the constant string hello world, but let's ignore that for now. If you use deduplication with a string like hello world that you're reading from a database, then you can save 40 bytes automatically without any without doing anything yourself. It'll cost a little bit in CPU, but you're going to save 40 bytes. If you use in turn, then you're going to also save the 24 bytes from the string object holder itself. So it's going to be 64 bytes, but it's a lot of cost. And in Java 6, your, your string table was limited to about 1,000 entries. Well, it, it, the map was 1,000 size. So if you had more than 1,000 entries, you would have to have uh, quite a few entries per, per bucket that started growing like that. Um, they increased that to about 60,000 um, entries, the map, in Java 7. And since Java 11, the table grows. So it will grow as you add more and more strings. It's going to grow as well. With J command, Java 9 onwards, you can show details about the string table. So, for example, if I go to, let's go to command prompts. Let's make this a bit bigger. So, if, if I type J command, it shows me the names on JPS, it might be better. So, J command, okay, so the, the program I want is this one here, the launcher. So, you can either say J command 7855, or you can say, just the name, which is also pretty convenient. In case you change the program, run the program again, then it's, it would be different, different, uh, different, uh, uh, different process ID. And when you say that, you can actually see in here uh, VM dot string table. So if you type VM string table, it shows you how big the table is. It's set at 65,536. This is Java 11, so it's always a multiple of two. And if I add more and more strings in there, it's going to double the size of the string table. You can see that I've got 8,700 entries in there at the moment inside the string table, um, which is okay. There's a average bucket size is 0.133, and the maximum bucket size is three. So that's completely fine. It's still quite slow to use in turn because it's a native method call. You're going to go through the boundary there. So uh, if you can avoid that, it's actually better to use your own. Now, you can also say minus verbose. And minus verbose shows you what these 8,737 strings are. So there you go. That's all of them. Right? You can see exactly what the strings are and how long they are as well. So from that, you can then, you know, if you want to debug why do we have so many in turns, you can find it this way. Oh, don't fall asleep here. All right. Now, you could also use your own concurrent hash map and use uh, put of absent to create your own little intern table. This is a good idea if you are sure, <laughs> famous last words, that your set of strings is bounded. 
right? If you've got a bounded set, if it's an unbounded set, you're going to have a problem. So it's going to be memory leak. But if it's a bounded set, and you know that you're going to have like a set of maybe, I don't know, a thousand strings, and it's, it's always those, one of those thousand strings, you can improve your performance quite substantially by using a concurrent hash map with put of absent. It's just that the strings in there never get released. What's interesting is that with a G1 process, with a G1 collector, um, they, they also, at the moment, as far as I know, only get collected from the intern table when you get a full GC. Right? So that, that is sort of a it's, it's loitering object, not exactly memory leak, but it's similar to memory leak. All right, now we go to Java 9. So um, Java 9 changed a few things. And if you are on Java 8, you might want to consider moving to Java 11 for this reason. That you might consider this, because we all use a lot of strings in our applications. And strings in Java 11, well, 9, 10, 11, and 12, so you know what I'm talking about, um, use a byte array rather than a char array. Okay? So there's a byte array, and there's also a coder over here that says what it is, if it's what type of, of encoding it is. At the moment, they only support two encodings. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about plus, because in the past, in the Java 1.0, plus was compiled to string buffer. Java 5 it was compiled to string builder. And the, the problem with having to recompile your code is that um, you know, if you've got some Java file that's lying around from Java 1.2, for example, it's going to use string, build, a string buffer by default. So that's the old way of doing things. And, um, and they wanted to have the ability to optimize the way that string concatenation works without having to recompile your code. So in Java 9, they changed the plus to no longer compile to string builder. If you're using Kotlin, plus at the moment is still going to be compiled to string builder. So that even if you're using Java 11, you're using Kotlin, you're going to get the slower version automatically. Right? But there's no reason why in the future they won't produce Java 11 code, and you automatically will get the speed update. So don't stop using Kotlin because of that. They've also got a string concat factory that does the actual concatenation of the strings. Now I've got benchmarks and uh, demo and so on on my GitHub repository if you want to have a look at that. And we did a bunch of benchmarks, Dmitry Vazelenko and myself, on this. And the, the results were really interesting because this is with mixed parameters. So the, the quiz I asked you at the beginning of this talk about the appending wasn't fair because it was only strings. And there they were all the same, except format was slower since, since nowadays. But if you look here at Java 6, for example, let's look at this column. In Java 6, you notice that the, the plus is the same speed as normal string builder. So string build and plus are exactly the same. They generate the same number of bytes, 896 bytes, both of them the same. They take the same number of nanoseconds per operation. And this is for mixed parameters. It's not only strings, also longs and floats and so on, doubles and so on. The, um, but if you pre-size it, if you first figure out what's the size supposed to be, then the string build is sized, used less bytes, and was faster. So in Java 6, it actually made sense, if this was your bottleneck, to pre-size your string builder. I mean, it's, it's like a 33% 30, uh, improvement in performance. That's not bad. If that's your bottleneck, 33% is quite substantial, if that's your bottleneck. Um, concat and format were much, much worse. But as I said, Format in a future Java version is going to be the same speed as normal plus. So you're going to get that benefit of using format at the moment. And uh, this sort of stayed the same throughout the Java version. Sort of the number of bytes changed because of some technical reasons, but it stayed the same. Java 1.6, 1.7, 1.8. 1.9 and 1.0, Java 9, 10, 11. I just put 11 there, but it's for all of them, it's the same. You notice that the plus has now become the fastest. So the plus went from the best before was 220 nanoseconds with very complicated, ugly code, down to the simplest thing that could possibly work is just the plus, down to it actually is almost twice as fast. 
It uses less bytes because, of course, we've got a, a, a byte array rather than a char array. So it uses less bytes. It's faster. Um, and it's actually faster than, than if you use the pre-sized string builder. So all those people who tell you you have to use string build in your code, you know, code reviews, well, they've been wrong forever, right? But now they're even more wrong than they were before since Java 9. So that gives you some ammunition. But don't forget that format is going to be as fast. And there are some preview versions of the JDK you can build to try it out where you can actually see that it's as fast and as, as normal plus. Now, the way that the, the plus works is with a string concat factory. And the string concat factory has different implementations that we can use. Um, and they use invoke dynamic to call the correct concatenation. And they've got these six algorithms. BCSB is, for example, the, like, just like the old Java 5 string builder with concatenation. And the, the one that they use is MH inline sized exact, so it's method handles, invoke dynamic, sized exact. And this, um, this happens also to be the fastest one. So you don't need to use other ones. Other ones are really that just tried it out. And if you want to compare it, you can try the other ones, but that one is a faster. So um, we try them all out, and as you see, MH inline size exact is the best. All right. Another thing that they did was they changed the char array to byte array, which saves space if you're not in Bulgaria. All right. And that was basically my little quiz at the beginning. Uh, there, there was a trick which she didn't pick up on, which is on purpose. Of course, I try and trick you. Whenever I do courses, I try and trick my students so they'd learn something. Um, and the trick was that you missed was this over here. Did anybody notice that? Yeah, you noticed, but you, you didn't associate it, but you noticed it. Very good. Well done for noticing it. What does it mean? It means it's a, it's a string builder and the underlying byte array is of size 2 to the power of 30. So it's like 1 billion, right? And when I appended Dobro Utro, which means good morning, then it increased the, 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 the size inside is 10. And when I, the moment that I try to add a bit shamte, which somebody says doesn't mean how are you. So I've learned something new. Good thing, thank you. Uh, so um, when you add that, it realizes that you're adding some characters which are not Latin 1, and it doubles underlying byte array. Right? Now, that's actually a bug. So we really should, we really should uh, class it as a bug, because there are only 10 characters. You don't need to double it. Right? You can actually fit it into that very easily. But anyway, they just do it automatic, like double the size. And of course, we then reach the limits of our byte array size by having 2 to the power of 31, and it gives an out-of-memory error. Right? So that's why it fails. And uh, this didn't fail in Java 8. So if I go to um, da -da 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 ground hash, um, where was this? Was the yeah. Yeah. Java C? Let's go to Java. Um, six, for example, Java C J prime. Uh, did it too far. Uh, Java EU playground J prime. You'll notice that it's going to work. Oh, wait, okay, <laughs> yeah, okay. I actually need to allocate it more memory to start with because that didn't by default have enough memory. Let's give it um, ah, four gigabytes. Should be enough. So Java 6, no problem. 28 length, which is interesting because I didn't actually have that as an option here. <laughs> right, but <laughs> none of you said that, right? I should actually add it there as an option. Uh, there you go. Um, Java, Java, sev Java 7. Java 8, right? Java 9, crash. Okay, So it's OK if you, and, and the, the way it works is, is if you, 
if you only have Latin characters, it by default uses one byte per character. And if you have any character which is not Latin one, it simply changes it to two bytes per character, um, which hopefully won't be a, a massive issue. You basically can't make such big strings anymore in Bulgaria and also not in Greece. All right, the performance, it does have a performance impact of, as, uh, as well, having them on and off. So if you turn them off, you're going to allocate more memory, like with the plus here, more memory, and it actually takes a bit longer as well. All right, now something else is we've got intrinsics. And this is the last thing I want to talk about. And you can see Java 8, there were quite a few intrinsics, and in Java 11, there were even more intrinsics. So what intrinsics means is you look at the Java code for equals and inter index off and compare to, and you think, oh, so that's how it works. But actually, like this is, for example, the code for string equals. But actually, when it, when it gets called, it, it delegates the call through to string Latin one dot equals. And if you look at that, you notice that there's a thing called hotspot intrinsic candidate. This means that that code is probably not going to be called. It's probably going to be replaced by optimized assembly code or C code. Right, and you see here, we're looking um, character by character at each element to see whether it's the same string. And the funny thing is, if you take this code, exact code like it is, and you run it both on you know, your handwritten code versus the standard Java code, you notice that the Java code is a lot faster, like the one that's a st standard string. And um, it, it, once the string gets beyond a certain length, if it's a small length, then string equals versus if you write it yourself will be the same. But as it grows, as the string gets bigger and bigger, if you're comparing equal strings, it becomes much faster to use string equals because they actually use vectorization for the comparison internally. It's a bit like they've got, a, um, there's, in arrays there's also a, a mismatch method that you can use which does the same type of thing. So they're not comparing one character at a time, they're doing vectorization inside there. So um, I did say that it was only once the link, but there's a link on here again. So if you missed my special at the beginning, tinyurlcom slash jprime19, it's, once you get it, you've got it for life. So a few summary from today. Whenever possible, use plus instead of string builder. And when you're going from Java 8 to Java 11 or 9, you need to recompile your code to get the most optimal uh, code. If you, if you write a loop, and inside the loop you're appending strings, you still want to use String Builder, but in real code I don't see that very often, that somebody's actually having a loop and appending strings in a loop. We should avoid intern in the code. Instead of doing that, use string deduplication or write your own cache with concurrent hash map if you know that your set of strings is bounded. Hashing used to be very dangerous on strings, especially if the hash code equals zero. It has improved with hash map because of the tree that they build inside. Another thing is that you, it's a good idea to move over to Java 11 or 12, whatever you want to go, as soon as possible if you're on Java 8, because you, you should see a memory improvement. You should also see garbage collection improvements as well. So we've got two minutes and 33 seconds left for questions. Anybody have any questions? Can I have questions? Yes. Can you go back to yeah. Hi, uh, thanks uh, for the presentation. Can you go back to the slide uh, 25? Whoa, okay. <laughs> okay, thanks. All right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, when I look at the Java 11 and the CB you know, string builder sized, I don't understand why, you know, it's the slowest one from the old Javas, but the size, you know, 20, uh, 280 bytes. So it's the, it's the this smallest one, one yeah. and also, but also the, you know, the s slowest one. Yeah. It doesn't make sense to me. Like, uh, how is this possible? Do you have any explanation for that? I don't. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's a good question. That's a good question. We, we spent a lot of time uh, running these benchmarks, and uh, uh, they're, they're all available on the URL. Um, 
carbots, uh, github.com slash carbots slash string performance. And it's with JMH, so you're welcome to, to try it out yourself and see if there's any, mis any mistake with our benchmark. Um, yeah, thanks. Will um, do. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate that. It, it, some of these results are puzzling. I agree with that. Maybe it's because they do extra checks for, this, um, for the byte encoding. Could be that. I'm not sure. It's almost like you get punished for using string builder size now as opposed to in the past. It's actually slower than in the past. A little bit slower, 10% like slower. So it could have something to do with encoding byte. I'm not sure. Any other questions? Oh. Got another 37 seconds for your questions. Oh, let me see if there's any question online, because we've got a bunch of people who are watching it online. Um, any questions online? Um, uh, awkward in some th someone asks you something you don't know. Not at all. It's perfect. Um, so, <laughs> can we look at the generated bytecode? There we go. Yeah, four, gig four gigabytes for a SART program. Yeah, well, it's the array that we're trying to make there. Okay. So, <laughs> I actually wonder, you know, I think, think we're slightly more in this room than the remote people. So, any other questions? I think we're done. So, thank you very much.